PowerPoint, and I cannot find it on here. Um, so apparently it was loaded. But uh, one of the problems with going last is that you incorporate everything uh, that everybody else has said. So hopefully I'm not going to ramble too much. I want to tell you what we did in Ottawa. Um, I'm a community planner. I'm actually a health planner. And what that means is I do just about anything that people want me to. It's kind of <laughs> 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 so, like uh, Denise and Kate, my executive director, Jack, was at the AOHC, heard about the Community Index of Wellbeing, got very excited. Because anything that we can do to promote the model of the CHCs, he's on board with. And what was very attractive to him is the basic concept that we can't measure the health of our society by GDP. So the first image he had is that somehow we could create an index for Ottawa, which is like a number you know, like when you saw the presentation. So that's what he came back to. Oh my geez, we can, we can do this. Thanks very much. Just some context. First of all, uh, as probably everybody knows, CHCs in Ottawa have been well established for over 40 years. There's a tremendous amount of interagency collaboration. The executive directors meet at least monthly. So there's a lot of sharing. So all that, those structures are already in place. The other thing in Ottawa is the CHCs uh, undertook a major project with the University of Ottawa to create uh, neighborhood data. So they looked at the neighborhoods in Ottawa, which are the catchment areas in Ottawa, and they mapped 140 indicators to them. And this was done through the University of Ottawa. So, I had a, a bit of a tough sell um, in trying to talk to various people, okay, what would the added value of the Canadian Index of Wellbeing work be? And I'm looking at Gary, because I must have phoned him like every week with another idea, but I've been talking to somebody and it didn't really work. So, I also like John Prine. I think I could uh, say that um, what I'm going to tell you about our journey is in spite of ourselves. And it's a song that how people are successful in spite of themselves. So I got a student from the University of Waterloo that was just a data whiz. And when we asked her to look at the Canadian Index of Wellbeing, she took it absolutely literally. And I don't know how many of you have actually tried to look at all the indicators. The eight domains all have eight indicators. Those eight indicators have indicators behind them. So her name was Cassie. She was a wonderful person. And with Gary's urging, she, she actually was. I'm not being sarcastic. She went through and absolutely, literally looked at the indicator, what it looked like on the page. And she looked at secondary sources. And she could quite quickly marry secondary sources of data to the indicators. So that's one thing we did. Um, so this is what she did. Where did she look? She looked at Statistics Canada. She looked at the Canadian Community Health Survey. She looked at the Labor Force Survey. She looked at the Vital Signs reports. She looked at the Ottawa Neighborhood Study, and she looked at other secondary data sources. So. so then I'm, I'm putting is this is data gaps, and, and I know Aaron could probably facilitate discussion later. She actually looked at only indicators which are included in the domains. Now, um, I don't know what to say because we've heard three really good presentations as to how this is not really the approach to go, but this is what we did. We were literal. She looked at those. Those indicators in the domains in no way 
make up the full picture of health and well-being. And they, in my uh, opinion, they in no way totally reflect the model of uh, community health and well-being. And this is looking in a very analytical, what we say, what data is available. So it's limited that way. When she began, she was trying to look at, like, the Canadian Index of Wellbeing is a composite index. And I guess Somerset West has some real, uh, you know, hard-ass measurement people. I don't know what to say. But they were trying to tell me, and Jennifer will laugh, that the value of the index was you couldn't just take one domain they were trying to say it's, it's a cumulative index. And so you had to look at all of them and look at it together and add them up and all this jazz. You know something, you can't do this. Um, but I just want to tell you that we went and Aaron could maybe pontificate why we can't do this. It particularly doesn't make sense at the community level. Perhaps it doesn't make sense at the provincial level. But to tell you, we, we tried. And I'm sure Gary thought we were all off. Cloud nine, but that's what we were doing. So, um, the other thing is I'd like to say is that after tremendous amount of discussion and review, I think we have to understand that the CIW framework, I, I feel, is limited in trying to portray the totality of our model and what we're doing. So, did we think, after all this, that it could be used as an evaluation tool of our model? Perhaps not, although we do have a big project to help us realize how we did it. Now, what we did look at the secondary data, and I'm kind of, this is reflecting what Charles says. You know, Ottawa is a pretty darn good place to live. We have higher than average income. I think we have the most educated people in the, uh, in the country. I mean, you know... Um, crime rates are going down like they are everywhere. So overall, when you looked at this, nothing was, oh my geez, you know, it was like, this is pretty good. But there were some findings that were significant. Uh, child care spaces, uh, need for child care spaces far exceeds the number of available spaces for over 70% of our wards. Poverty affects 11.7% of our population, so the idea of health equity and the growing disparity between the haves and the haves not is an issue. It's especially an issue for Somerset West. <clears throat> Affordable housing is an issue for one in five Ottawa families. 8% of the houses are food insecure. This is all tied into income, and it's, but that's it. Voter turnout in Ottawa is declining for elections at all three levels of government. And Ottawa residents are more likely to be dis dissatisfied than satisfied with their municipal government performance. When these were presented, um, it, was, it was suggested that how we could use the index is to support our policy ask for the municipal elections. In true fashion, there was a group already working on educate and, and, uh, educating uh, women, largely in social housing developments, to be ambassadors to educate people about election issues and to determine policy issues. So we decided, because that, that was the Coalition of Health and Resource Centers, and this work was the Coalition of Health Resource Centers, that we would kind of marry the two. And what it was decided that we would do is that uh, we are going to uh, have a report produced in Ottawa that has three components, the findings from the CIW, stories on how CHCs and community health and resource centers are addressing uh, these issues in our community, and then our policy acts. And in, uh, and, and this is going to be October 7th. We are going to have a launch of this report at City Hall. And 
As well, the AUHC has committed to making a videotape and other multimedia resources to enable us to do this. So what this is, is that I'm still, you know, maybe it's just being too black and white, but we're still struggling with looking at all eight domains at the, CA, at the CIW and wondering whether we can actually or whether we should or how we're going to do is match up the programs that we do to all the CIW um, domains. Now, I understand in, in your communities the answer no was quickly, <laughs> was quickly come to when you focused on one. So I think I'm going to end by just telling you what we're doing and quickly. The domain of the democratic engagement. So this is directly uh, lower voter turnout. We have a significant community initiative called Making Votes Count. So in our report, we are going to highlight what Making Votes Count is doing. And then we're going to have, as part of the report, a story from our uh, participant in making votes count. On community vitality, we're going to highlight our good food markets. I think every community has good food markets just about. So we're going to highlight. And I learned on the drive here that we have a mobile food uh, center, so we'll put that in. Living standards. When you look at the work that the Ottawa CHCs focus on, a lot of it is really living standards. You know, it's tied to poverty. You know, and maybe this is a bit my bent, but if you're living in poverty, you can't afford bus passes, you can't afford, you know, there's lots of stuff. But for our living standards, uh, we're going to look at employment. And one of the issues that uh, has been identified in the city of Ottawa is that uh, newcomer and immigrant employment. I mean, there's more barriers to employment when you're a newcomer or an immigrant. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're having workshops uh, primarily for people in the African Caribbean community to try to teach them how to do business cases where, where they can find money. It's kind of focused on the individual so that they can look at creating or getting employment. The environment, you know, the environment for the CIW is a real tough one. Um, we're looking at other programs, bike recycle programs. I think all CHCs do bike recycle. All CH many CHCs have bike programs. Time use is kind of a real difficult one. We're going to focus on transit, and I think Gary B have to talk about this because really this is a poverty issue. You know, the policy issue is that we would like uh, the city of Ottawa to offer a discount or low or, or no cost bus passes to people in low income. It's kind of not uh, time use, it's, it's kind of transit, but healthy populations we want to focus on housing. Um, one of the municipal asks last time in the election and this time as well will be for the city uh, more money uh, for affordable housing. Leisure and culture, we're kind of looking at caregivers, uh, the impact of being a caregiver on your life. So we're going to feature primary care outreach. Again, a program that I think many centers have across the province. And in education, we're going to focus Pathways to Education. So what's interesting about a number of these programs, like Pathways to Education, is that they're very common programs across, across a number of CHCs. So one of the things I'm hoping is that uh, this report that we do can be used by other people as well. So I think that's all I have to say.